Hey, I'm Alicia from MobilityMastery.com and today I want to urge you to stop rolling your glutes. <laughs> so what I'm doing right now, I want you to not do. And I want to talk to you about why and what to do instead. So I can't tell you how many emails and messages and requests I get for, Hey, I, Alicia, I don't see any glute release technique on your site. Do you have one? Am I missing something? Couldn't find it. <laughs> and I don't have one. Uh, in four years, I haven't really felt a strong reason to put one up there, even though I can think of a few ways to do it. And here's why. If you are trying to release your glutes, then chances are you have glute pain or hip pain uh, in the posterior hip or maybe the side of your hip, or you have low back pain, or you've been told you have a tight piriformis or you have piriformis syndrome because you have pain in your glutes. Uh, any number of those reasons is usually why people end up foam rolling or releasing their glutes, whether it's on a foam roller or a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball or any ball, uh, baseball, whatever. Um, I see so many people doing it. Uh, I just want to stop them. Um, so here's why. If you actually have pain in your glutes or pain in your low back, that's a symptom. It's not the root cause. And it's a symptom of a much bigger problem. And that area of your body is actually trying to get your attention because it's annoyed, it's irritated, it's getting pulled on, it's getting abused in some fashion, and it's getting your attention. And going into those glutes or even your QLs, something in the low back, or any of those little muscles, right, your piriformis, can make your pain worse. So here's what happens for a lot of people. They go into their glutes and they get a little bit of a reprieve for whatever pain they get, um, you know, consistently that has them going to their glutes in the first place. So maybe they get a couple hours, maybe they get a day and then the pain comes back and then they go release their glutes again and then the pain comes back and they end up in this vicious cycle of getting a little bit of relief and thinking that they're doing something good only to end up in more pain or just consistent pain, right? Now they're managing pain instead of finding the root problem. So I've been working with one-on-one -on -one clients since 2008 and in all of that time in the, like I you know I've worked with like I don't even know I feel like hundreds of people with low back pain glute pain hip pain and out of those hundreds of people maybe even a thousand sessions by now of like low back pain um almost never do I need to release their glutes for them to get out of pain and in some cases I am willing to go into their glutes to show them that they don't need to get out of pain. And when I do, I give them the warning that their pain could get worse if we do. And a lot of the time it happens. It actually happened so frequently that I just stopped doing it for people with low back pain or glute pain. Um, there are occasional reasons I might want to go into someone's glutes and release them, but I'm actually stepping on them from the top down in a really safe position uh, for the tissues there where I'm not squishing anything and I can have a lot of control. So it's very different than placing your weight on a roller or a ball where you don't have a lot of control over how much weight goes into those tissues. And those tissues are actually like the most abused, <laughs> you know, tissues that aren't getting what they need. They're getting pulled on. Um, and that's usually due to a pelvic instability scenario. So in order to find the root cause of pain, you have to figure out where that pelvic instability is coming from. And most of the time it's going to be coming from your thighs. So either your quads or your quad hip flexors, your adductors, your IT bands, and maybe hamstrings. And every once in a while, pelvic instability can come from something far away and weird like your calves or your feet or your shoulders. But consistently for the last 11 years, since 2008, I have seen it be predominantly something in those thighs. The fascia left to right is out of balance and it's causing some kind of pelvic shift or tilt, um, some kind of imbalance that creates a compensation pattern in the hip or the low back region. And when your body can't compensate anymore, 
you get that pain signal. So <laughs> what I want you to do instead of releasing your glutes is start with your quads and your quad hip flexors. And I have techniques for that on the site. I'm not gonna demo that right now, but we're gonna link to it for you. All the videos that I have for quads and quad hip flexors, there are a couple of them. Um, and I want you to figure out if your left quad or quad hip flexor has more fascial adhesion, more restriction than your right or vice versa. And I want you to keep in mind that if you have say a lot of adhesions or fascial restriction in your low quad on the left, let's say, it doesn't automatically mean that your whole left quad is tighter than the right because you can absolutely overuse your quad hip flexors on one side and overuse your lower quads, the VMO and you know, the area closer to the knee on the other side, that's totally possible. So your goal is to figure out, you know, where those adhesions exist and where they are in your quads, left to right. You're gonna know this because when you get on the foam roller to release your quad fascia, it's gonna suck a lot. So if you have unhealthy fascia, it's gonna hurt. Healthy fascia won't hurt with compression. So if you find really intense, tender, sore, tight fascia, you're gonna to wanna to do that stuff more than if you find fascia that's less intense, less sore, less tender when you get on it. But I want you to really hunt around for the areas of tightness and tenderness and sensation and texture in your quads. If this is you know, your first exploration for finding the root cause of your you know, piriformis syndrome or your low back pain or your hip pain, uh, because things can hide. You might think you've done a really good job if you spent five minutes on one side, which is actually a lot of time, um, and you might think you've, you've nailed it. You've figured out what's in there. Well, I promise you, um, even I, uh, you know, me stepping on somebody using my method of kinetics, like I've been doing this a long time and I rarely miss stuff, but I still do sometimes um, with a first pass. Or you might have to actually look at it from a slightly different angle. So I want you to actually go after the middle part of your quad, the top, the inside a little bit, and then towards the IT band to really map all of it really, really well. And if you do this right, I promise you, if you spend 30 minutes just kind of exploring, making notes, getting up, walking around, when I say 30 minutes, that's not straight foam rolling for 30 minutes. I mean, maybe spending 30 seconds to a minute on one spot, getting up, walking around a little bit, spending another 30 seconds or so on another spot, or maybe a minute. So when you're first doing this, your job is to map. Your job is to figure out what's going on left to right. Your job isn't to solve the problem for good right now yet. <laughs> Um, your job isn't to release that fascia completely yet. Your job is to find out those imbalances left to right. That way, when you go to actually release the fascia, you know which areas to target explicitly, and then you only need to probably spend five minutes um, per quad, and maybe not even both quads, because you might find that it's really just one giant adhesion in your left hip flexor, let's say. Um, or it might be just, you know, something in that right leg if you're like a soccer player or a cyclist or you really overuse your right leg for some reason. So the first time you're doing this, it's all about exploration, figuring it out for yourself. Then you want to make your goal daily kind of working on it five to 10 minutes. That's really all you need. Um, and then seeing how you progress and seeing if you feel better. And then of course, <laughs> along with that, stop touching your glutes. Stop releasing them, stop stretching them, stop getting on a foam roller, stop having your massage therapist touch them. Um, I can't tell you how many people hear this from me and it like doesn't compute because it seems to go in one ear and out the other. Uh, and they come back and tell me, oh yeah, I totally stopped um, going into my glutes, but you know that area where, you know, it's next to the TFL, but a little towards the hip, kind of like in that piriformis region, I've been finding so much stuff in there and I've been going after it with a, um, you know, a ball. <laughs> I'm like, ah, that is your glute. <laughs> so I'm not trying to, um, you know, like embarrass anyone or shame anyone right now. I'm just, I, I can't tell you how many times people think they're not going into their glutes and they still are. So if you're doing anything in the butt region here, the hip region, anything like that, other than your TFL, 
the TFL is different, but if you're going after anything in the hip, anything in that posterior um, region, you're on your glutes and I want you to stop. So I hope that's clear. Um, you have your homework right now. If this is you with piriformis syndrome or anything in that posterior hip, leave that area alone and then go after first thing, just quads. So I'm having you start with quads instead of maybe adductors or IT band because it's the number one thing I see with glute pain specifically and piriformis syndrome. Because usually what's happening is if this is your pelvis, you're getting torqued out of alignment somewhere and then this is your piriformis back here and it's going, ah, I'm getting pulled forward or I'm getting compressed or I'm getting over um, stretched in some weird way. Uh, and maybe it's pinching something, but this area back there isn't the problem. It's coming from something else. And most of the time it's gonna be in the quads. If you really wanna go after mapping your fascia, then I would say number two would be your adductors. Number three would be your IT bands maybe hamstrings, and that pretty much covers it as far as your major muscle groups that could be pulling your pelvis out of alignment. So if you got your homework, let me know what you think of this video by commenting below, and please tell me you're gonna stop releasing your glutes and do what I just mentioned instead, and then if you try it, I would love for you to come back and share your results because I know you're gonna inspire somebody else to actually listen to me and stop releasing their glutes and go after the root cause instead. So share your comments and thoughts below. I will definitely be in there talking to you guys. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I have new videos that go out every Monday and Wednesday. And also if you're new here, I'd like to invite you to join my email community because I have some free resources for you. Uh, some PDF guides and a free kinetics demo and maybe some other stuff depending on when you land on this video and you can do that by clicking the link below uh, and I just do email trainings I don't do anywhere else as well so I hope you'll join me and I think that's it thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time